Hey guys, it is a brew day. It's uh, actually February break. It's uh, Tuesday, just after Valentine's Day. So uh, Matt and I at Rec Brewing are going to do a kettle sour today. So I'm just getting my uh, got my get over here my computer up. We've got a Zoom coming. It is a little chilly out here. I don't know if you can see that. It's uh, 32 degrees in the brew house. So um, got get some heat running here. Get the water started warming up so I can actually uh, heat this place up, get it up into the 40s, low 50s, something a little bit more reasonable out here. So um, I can show you outside it's a little uh, a little different. So middle of February in Western New York. So it is what it is. Get a brew day in, kind of take you along the ride as we move along here. Um, so the kettle sour we're doing is just my uh, my base recipe for my sour. So I typically go with five pounds pills, five pounds wheat. Uh, puts me right in that 1045 to 1050 range, somewhere right in there, depending on how the efficiencies run. Um, we're going for a yellow uh, medium. That is our uh, our water profile that we're we're shooting for with us. Um, we're using Saz at uh, one ounce for 30 minutes. We're just doing a 30 minute boil on this. And uh, I'm using Voss Kavik yeast. I'm not sure what Matt decided on. He's got a couple of them from the, uh, what was it? Uh, the yeast experiment there back a while back or a malt experiment. One of those ones Gary sent uh, Berserker, Juggernaut, and maybe one other one that we've got now. So, um, but that's the, uh, the basis for that. I'm gonna give my uh, new screen, screen a try here. So I'm gonna, this is the, old, the new kettle I was talking about the other day. This is the screen I'm gonna try and uh, see how that goes. So kind of take you through and see how things work. So I gotta get my pump put together here. I took it apart, cleaned everything yesterday, made sure it was all dry so it didn't freeze up out here. So get everything kind of together here. Uh, Matt and I are gonna jump online in about 10 minutes or so. It's about 10 to four. So he's getting off, uh, getting up for the day. He works nights. So we're gonna hit this here in between couple hours to your, uh, before he has to go to work at 6 or 7 o'clock tonight. So try to knock this out and we'll get a little video as we're moving along. All right, guys. Hope everybody's doing well. Cilantro. All right. So this is the maiden voyage of this new screen for the kettle. So kind of the claw hammer design. So I just mashed in. We're going to put the uh, top back on it and we'll get her started here and see how she runs. All right. One hour mash time. 60 minutes. All right, so we got the recirculation going. So, so far so good. Seems to be recirculating well. Put that back on there and let it go. One hour from now, we'll see how we end up. All right, so the mash is over. It looks like a success with the screen for the first run of it. Very happy. Just dripping out now. You can see inside there. So we've got... Uh, 1032, 1033 pre-boil. So this is a kettle sour, so we will bring this up to a boil for a few minutes, just kill all the bugs off. And then we will chill down to about 105, pitch good belly, good shot. Let that go for about 24 hours, and then we're gonna pick back up tomorrow. And then we'll go through the typical brew. So we're gonna let the pH drop down to about 3.4 to 3.6 pH right now is 5.5. We're just letting this drain. Matt is doing his. Hey, look at that. The so same we're thing. both doing the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. We will check you later. All right, guys. So it is day two. Just getting hooked up here. Uh, I'm going to hook in with Matt here in just a second. It is uh, just a couple minutes before four o'clock. We're there. So just took a Sample, we're running three, I don't know if you can see that or not, three point, I'm not going to focus enough, 3.7, uh, it was running 3.6, this is what happens when you're in upstate New York and you're outside, it looks like this, you got that much snow, that's my pool, you got that much snow out there, that's how you cool down a pH sample, get yourself a bowl of snow. So right now we are, again, 3.7. That's after 24 hours. Uh, actually, probably a little bit short of 24 hours. I think I pitched sometime. Uh, we finished up around 7, chilled, 
it was probably about nine o'clock before I was able to pitch the good belly. So a little less than 24 hours. So um, talking five hours less than that, I guess. So 3.7, that's not a bad spot to be. Uh, I typically like it between 3.4 and 3.6. So I uh, just started, put the flame underneath there. So we'll get started here. So we got a 30 minute boil in front of us today. One ounce of Saz. Uh, chill down to pitching temperatures. I've already got my yeast starter of Boz ready to go. So that'll be ready to pitch and go in. Um, my firm chamber got up to 74. Matt and I decided we're going to try to go between 70 and 72 and get that ready to roll. So, all right, guys, uh, I'll try to get a couple or at least a one hop drop I have if I can get that today and get a little bit of video and then uh, we'll see how this goes. All right, slot you guys. All right, so we are at hot break right now. So we'll get through this. I got my one ounce of size over there, uh, yeast nutrient. And I get that with the last five minutes left to go. So we'll see if we can't get a uh, sh shot here. Maybe we'll dump them right now and we'll start our timer. See if we don't get a boil over here with this. No problem with this system is, is this is gas here, so I have to throttle this. Uh, up and down to make sure I don't get a problem here. So, all right, here we go. One ounce of size going in. All right, so far, looking good. All right, well, we'll come back when we're chilling and see how things go. Well, when you got that much snow outside, this is what you do to chill. So I got my emergent chiller in there. Got the system coming through my pump, up through the system. We're down to 114 and dropping. This has been probably five minutes and through the whirlpool arm so it's rotating around and then we're just bringing this back out and just basically running the water over the top of the snow so god given ice so god give it god take it away right <laughs> so this is our uh our way to chill the waters we're going through so we'll catch you here as we get pitching yeast all right so there it is that is voss from Nate at Under the Table Brewing South. And that is pitched, ready to go. So we're sitting at 72 degrees. Uh, close this up and let it go. So we will see how it turns out. All right, so we have finished up. This is the five gallons of um, the kettle sour that Matt and I made together. So I've got a sanitized bag that's gonna go in there. So I dunked that in sanitizer. Then I've got the blueberries that we're putting into it, and I'm going to put them in a Ninja and basically put them through a puree. Uh, what I found is, is if they're frozen, use some of the beer that's already in there, put it in that, then put your frozen fruit in there, puree it up. If they're not frozen, then you won't have a problem with that. Sorry, it's, i got a brew going on in the background here. If they're not frozen, then it won't be a problem. There's enough of the fluids that are natural to the berries that you can create a puree without that. So it depends on if they're frozen or not. These are kind of been sitting out a little while. I shouldn't have an issue with them. So I'm going to puree them up, take the top off, dump them in there. We're going to let them sit in the beer for two days, and then we're going to transfer and put into keg and uh, force carbonate. So it should be ready for trying here in a couple of days. So get a couple of these set, and I'll show you what All we right, got. So I ended up pouring in oh maybe a cup or two of the beer from that put it into that guy and then that's the puree that it basically come up with give you a good look so that's two packages i think we're going with three pounds um i think i've got uh two and a half three pounds right there out of the containers i have these are just frozen straw or frozen blueberries from aldi's um and then we'll see if we can't pour these in and see if we can't do that all right, all right so just quickly take the top off Pull of this, pour this in. You can start to see, I think you can see on the camera there, color's already starting to drop down through there pretty good. Got my star sand here, so I make sure I star sand the top before I put it back on there. Shouldn't be an issue, but uh, we'll get uh, two more of those done and then uh, give you a shot of the color. Let's see if we can move it down a little bit. You can see the color starting to starting to change right. already. Here's the other two pounds. Actually, a pound and a half, I guess, probably is the best way of putting it. Get a 
little bit a uh, little bit of beer here out of the front end of it. We'll rinse it down a little bit here and make sure we get all the fruit out of there. Basically, just use that and kind of stir it up. And make sure I get all that that's left in there out. Dropping stuff here. Watch out, guys. All right. Get that there. We'll sanit throw that back in the sanitizer. All right. Resanitized. Back on that. So I'll give you a good look at the coloring. You can see that blueberries are going to give it a nice, I don't think it'll be as dark as like the black raspberries are, but it'll give it a nice uh, bluish hue, maybe maybe turn a little pink. So we'll see how this turns out. So we're going to go 48 hours. So this is midday Sunday. So probably be Tuesday when I get home from work, I'll transfer and uh, we'll cold crash and then uh, we'll get it carbonated. So hopefully it'll be ready by the end of the week. All right, guys, so today is kegging day. So we went 48 hours with blueberries. That's, I don't know how close I can get there. That's three pounds of blueberries. I don't know if you can see through, get a good look at the color. Three pounds of blueberries. So we fermented out. Um, Matt fermented with Juggernaut, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, Matt. And I fermented with Voss. So we both did Kvike strains. Fermented it out until terminal gravity. Then we... Added three pounds of blueberries, let that go 48 hours, cold crash 48 hours, and now it's kegging. So Matt, I believe, was going to keg tonight as well. It is Thursday, uh, let's see, the 25th of February. So we'll open this guy up. Get running through, what a pretty color. And we will start the transfer into the keg. So interested to see, this is the first time I've ever used blueberries. Matt and I have come up with, I believe we're going to call this Tipsy Smurf. So, be interested to see how this turns out. So, I'm going to uh, force carb it, put it in my keyser tonight. Hopefully, have a, uh, a uh, tasting of it this weekend so I can put this video out and everybody know how it goes. So, pretty quick process. Uh, we brewed back on Wednesday and Thursday or Tuesday and Wednesday of the week previous to this. So, uh, it's going to end up being... Probably about 10 days, grain to glass. So, all right. Hopefully, next thing you see is a tasting video. All right, guys. Cilantro. Hey, guys. So, this is uh, the final portion of the collab with Matt at Rec Brewing. So, we did a kettle sour. Uh, Matt's first time doing a kettle sour. Um, I've obviously gone through... Uh, I think if you see my channel at all, I've done some kettle sours in the past. So um, we decided to do something that neither one of us has done is use blueberries. So he had done kettle sours and I hadn't done blueberries before. So this is the finished product. So let's see if we can get you real pretty color. Very happy with how it turned out. It's got a nice tartness to it. Lots of, lots of berry right on the nose. Get you right there. Uh, get a little of that sour in there as well, but just love the, the color that came out of it. Uh, I've done black raspberries. Uh, obviously, this is blueberries. I've done um, one that I call Searching for Shade that's got uh, mango, papaya, pineapple in it. Um, so I really enjoy having sours on. Even at this time of year during the, the winter time, I still enjoy having a sour. Um, to me, it's just a really refreshing beer. Um, Four percent. I think this was a 10, 1040, 1042 starting, and I think ended up at 1012. It's a 50-50 uh, split of pills and wheat. Uh, we put, I think we used saws in this uh, for just a bittering, just 10, 10 IBUs of bittering. Sometimes I don't put any hops at all in there. It just depends on how we're doing. Uh, Matt and I got together on the recipe and, uh, and came up with that. And then the two variables we have, other than... Um, uh, obviously not having distilled water. We're coming off our own water, um, but then we built the, the profile to the same. 
Uh, but other than that, the only variable we have is the yeast. So I use Voss on this. Thanks, Nate. Uh, under table brewing, he sent me a sample of that, so I built that up as a starter. Worked out great. And then uh, Matt used Juggernaut or Berserker. I can't remember which one of the two he told me he used. So I know it took off for him. I think he had a blow off. So, all right. So lots of lots of berries right there on the nose. Real clean smelling. Love that tartness. All right, let's launch you guys. Yeah, you get that. It's a nice tartness right on the side. It's not a sharp tartness. Uh, we use lactose in this. It was eight ounces of lactose. What I found with my my uh, sours, if I don't put that lactose in there, if your sour fan is like, eh, it, sours are okay. The sharpness that you get in the sours, depending on how low you let that pH go. Uh, this one, I think I went 3.6, 3.7. Um, depending on how low, if you get down to the 3.4 range, 3.3 3 range, that sharpness of that sour gets to be, you know, I don't mind it because I, I really enjoy sours. But if you're a, a sour, you can take them or leave them. That sharpness can be too much. The other thing I found with the lactose, uh, not only does it mellow out the sharpness a little bit, I think it bumps up the flavor of the, uh, of the fruit. So it kind of backs up that sweetness of the fruit because typically that ferments out. So you do get the, the flavor of the fruit, but the sweetness doesn't really stick around with it. So um, I may be completely talking out of my butt. I don't know, but it's what I feel like happens with the sours as it goes through. So I typically in a five gallon batch would put six to eight ounces of lactose in with about five minutes left to go in the boil. And it feels like to me, maybe a little bit of mouthfeel with that adds that because it's a, typically a um, yellow dry or yellow medium uh, profile that I use on these. So I feel like it, it adds a little bit of that to it, a little bit of mouthfeel, a little bit of sweetness behind it. it just kind of bumps up that, uh, or amplifies maybe is a better word, uh, that uh, fruit flavor. So uh, I just, I enjoy the heck out of these. Um, we used Blue, uh, Good Belly, the uh, probiotic. So the, uh, the brew day basically was two days. Uh, we started on a Tuesday afternoon. And we mashed in, uh, mashed at uh, 150. I apologize, I don't have the notes sitting right here in front of me. Right in that 150 range, 148 to 150 range. So on the lower end, uh, mashed for an hour. Again, 50-50 split of the pills and the wheat. Sparged off. Um, and we did a, both did a mash out to 168, sparged off. Got our, our volumes. Uh, I boil. Both of us did um, boil for about five minutes, basically just pasteurizing everything, clean it up, chilled to about 105, uh, dropped the good belly in there, wrapped it up, put it in the firm chamber, uh, and then at that point, let it set for 24 hours, uh, put a cover on it. I don't do um, O2 purging with the CO2 and plastic wrap, all that type of stuff. I did when I first started. I've listened to a lot of different people. I've read stuff on uh, Milk the Funk just doesn't seem like there's any detriment to the beer from what people are saying in terms of science ex experiments they've done, those types of things. Uh, so I've gone to the point now that I just put a, a cover on it, just let the same boil kettle cover that you normally would use. Put that on there. I pitch the, the good belly, let it go 24 hours. It's almost always, I don't think I, matter of fact, I don't think I've ever had one. And this might be... Sixth, seventh time I've done a, a sour, maybe even more than that. I have to look at my notes. Um, that doesn't end up somewhere between three, four and three, six, three, seven. This one was a touch higher at three, seven, I think. Bring it back out 24 hours. So we got together again the following day on Wednesday. Bring it back up to a boil. And at that point, you're just into a normal brew day. So if you're going to put hops in, hit your hops at the boil marks, wherever your recipe says. Chill to your pitching temperature. Uh, I think we both tried to ferment this. Uh, a little bit low for Kvike strains, but uh, a little bit higher than what you typically would for an ale. So we were, I think, in the 72 to 74 range is what we were trying for. Uh, both of us with ambient temperatures, it, it kind of varied a little bit. I think mine ended up uh, at 74 overnight the first night. And then I was able to back it back down a little bit. Um, I was worried about being outside. Uh, my fridge chamber is out in the brew house and there's no insulation there and it's in February. So I cranked up the, the heat in there a little bit and uh, I was worried about it going down, going down overnight. So I think I ended up at 74 and then it was able to come back down to 72 and, and uh, came back down. 
but uh, let it ferment out. I think we were both done in about three days. Put the berries on it. Uh, we left the berries on for 48 hours, then cold crash 48 hours, and then transferred to keg. And uh, I transferred Friday night, excuse me, Thursday night. Burst carbonated overnight. So it's got some, some legs on it. I don't know if you can see the carbonation still coming up. Uh, come into focus, will you? Maybe you can. Um, pretty good carbonation. Needs a little bit more. It's not quite there yet, but uh, pretty close to, to being ready around the money. Sit in the keyser a day or two and she'll be all set. And uh, transfer it over. I took a sample last night just to check and see if it'd be set to go on this Saturday afternoon. So what's that? Uh, 10, 12 days maybe? Something like that. 10 days. Uh, pretty much grain to glass. So can't complain about that. Kavike's awesome getting it done fast. Uh, not a huge beer. So Matt had a great time brewing with you. Second time we've done a collab together. Really, really fun beer. Uh, if I didn't say it, we were calling this uh, Tipsy Smurf. I know it's uh, a little on the pink side, but that's that. Then you don't get that blue out of the, the blueberries typically. Um, so this was three pounds of blueberries too. So I don't think I said that before. But uh, thanks a bunch for brewing with me, Matt. Had a great time doing it. Hopefully you like this hour as much as I do. Um, I know you're excited about it. I've seen some great pictures so far. But uh, if anybody's interested in any any questions that I have in my process, um, I'll, if I'll remember, I'll put a, I have a, a video that kind of takes you through my whole process. And I'm, I'm still learning as I go through. So if you've got comments and things that you think would work better in my process, throw them down below in the comments. I'd love to learn. I think that's one of the coolest things about this whole hobby is, is everybody's kind of experimenting and trying things out and things found it worked for you and maybe you just fumbled on it and then you never realize it's kind of like the the oxygen thing that you know, I just tried it once it didn't didn't do a didn't turn my beer into a dumper so I said all right well give it a shot and go and it hasn't caused me any problems yet so but uh, if you got thoughts comments love to to have conversations with people about it always learning so. All right, rambled on long enough with this. Hope everybody has a great one. If you haven't checked out brewtubers.com, make sure you do so. Uh, we're only two meetings in. Just had our uh, first board meeting. We've got a, a fully, um, fully a full board. Maybe is the best word. I'm fumbling over my words today. We have a full board. Uh, everything's up and going. We've got experiments out there that are uh, are signing up now. There's still spots open. It's a Dropkick Kvike, uh, Dropkick Nate using Kvike strains. Then there's a Saison one and a Dual. So that's coming up here very soon. So if you're interested in jumping in, love to have you part of members of the BrewTubers, great group of guys, all kinds of knowledge out there. So if you get an opportunity, check out BrewTubers.com. Hit up any of the guys that are on uh, on YouTube. Everybody's really, really welcoming. Would love to have anybody that's interested in joining the club or even just kind of shop, stop in and check us out and ask questions and see what you think. So, all right, guys, it's Lancha. Hope everybody has a great one. Love me a sour.